What's up guys? Today we're going to be taking another look at Red Star OS. Now, if you haven't seen the video that I did on my channel about a year ago about this thing, I'll just give you a brief intro about what this distro is about. So it's a kind of unique Linux distribution based on Fedora Linux. Red Star OS is the main operating system that is used in North Korea. That's right, Linux is used all over the world, even north of the DMZ. Now, you might be wondering, why does the North Korean government in upper class North Koreans and in the schools in North Korea and so on use a Linux distribution when here in the Western world, most of these kinds of institutions would be using Windows or Mac OS? And the answer quite simply is that those other operating systems are very proprietary. They are not based on something that is more open source like Fedora, which is what Red Star is based on. And there's also very clear evidence that OS's like Windows and Mac OS collect data on you and possibly have NSA backdoors built right into the systems. You can look up the Microsoft NSA key if you wanna go down the rabbit hole about that. So obviously the North Korean government, they wouldn't want America, one of their arch enemies, to spy on them through their capitalist operating systems. So thus, Red Star was born. Now, I wouldn't really recommend using Red Star as anything more than just experimentation or playing with it for fun, uh, because the North Korean government, they took Fedora, a pretty nice Linux distro, and then they added their own tracking and malware to it to make sure that their citizens don't do anything naughty like Google freedom or human rights. But we might be able to change that because there are some ways to disable the malicious components that are in Red Star OS and regain control over the distro. Uh, so after doing that, uh, this distro might be a little bit more viable. I mean, it does have a pretty nice desktop environment. Uh, it was riced to look more like the Mac OS, or I guess an older version of it. I don't think it really looks uh, that much like this right now. Um, but yeah, rice to look like a Mac because, fun fact, Kim Jong-un is a big Apple fan. Uh, and I guess I'm not that surprised that the leader of a country of brainwashed people like North Korea would be a fan of Apple's work. But yeah, this is KDE, rice to look like a MacBook. So I guess you could call it the Kim desktop environment. Uh, now, the first step to uh, basically regaining your control is to become a root user. And the steps to doing this are actually pretty similar to doing it on a MacBook. So you'll want to um, click on this folder here that's got the cup full of pens. And um, you'll want to click on, I think it's this one. Um, that should be app link in Korean. And yeah, you'll want to click on this one uh, that has like the wrench and the hammer on it. And then here you go. You have a terminal. So the command we're gonna need is root setting. Uh, so that's all one word, and then you'll get this prompt that pops up. So click on the lock, and it's going to prompt you for the password for your username. All right, so then we're unlocked, and then we'll want to click on this root here, and then this is going to be your password for the root account. And I think that's what I need to do. Let's see, maybe I need to check that box too. It's a little bit tricky when it's in Korean because I don't, uh, I don't speak Korean. All right, so let's see if that worked. All right, great, so we're logged in as root now or, you know, we have our root shell. Uh, so now that we have that, you're going to want to change the language, unless, of course, you can read Korean. Uh, so the way that you would do that is said I, and we're going to look for KO underscore KP, replace that with EN US globally, and Etsy sysconfig uh, IL, Or no, it's I one eight. 
n and usr share config kde globals all right so after running that it should have um updated the gui and i think um let's see i think if i go into here yeah so you can see that uh it's not in well down here is still going to be in korean until we reboot um, so now we're going to start getting internet access. Um, so the first thing you want to do is just make sure that you actually enable DHCP because during the install steps, uh, like I show you the installation steps in the other video I did of this, uh, but it can be a little confusing to see if DHCP is enabled. So just go ahead and change it now if you didn't do that already. Um, so now, we have to modify IP tables to be able to actually use the internet because by default, Red Star blocks all IP addresses that are outside of North Korea. Um, so like it's doing this first run thing, but if we try to go to like, I don't know, google.com or whatever. It's not gonna be able to connect. So, we gotta fix that. RM Etsy sysconfig IP tables and then service IP tables restart. All right, and then we'll reboot. So you should be able to do one reboot. Um, like I said, you don't need to change. Uh, or you don't necessarily need to change all of the graphical components, but now all of the Korean stuff should be uh, switched over, except for the browser. Um, there's some extra steps to change it in the browser. Yeah, you can see down here, everything's updated to English. All right, so let's go ahead and westernize our browser. Because as you can see, this is still in Korean. So you want to click on this second tab from the end and then go down to the third from the top. And then we want to click on this one, second to last. This, and then click on the yellow part. And there we go. So now we're in English. Um, and we should be able to go to a website now. Let's see. Yeah, so um, the reason I went to this site is because with this browser, you can only really use HTTP sites. Um, like, uh, I don't think DuckDuckGo has one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Google does, though. Yeah, so <laughs> it's gonna be like using, um, cause I think this browser is based off of like Firefox 3.5 or something like that. Uh, so the internet is not that usable <laughs> right now, even after you know changing everything over to English. So now that things are relatively comfortable and usable for a Western user, it's time to remove the malicious components because we still don't really have full control over the system. Uh, there is SE Linux enabled that still, there's some rules to it that still limit our abilities. There's also a virus scanner, which is very suspicious. Uh, it's like a one created by the North Korean government, so probably a fake antivirus. And there's also this watermarking functionality. So this is probably the worst thing of all. Uh, it puts a unique identifier on any image, and I think it does it on any text file too. It puts like um, a tag or something in the XF data that you can see to uniquely identify it uh, and basically track an image. So say that if you download something to your computer uh, without removing this, it's going to have that marked. Uh, and then if you send it to somebody else, it's going to be marked as well that it came from you. So I guess the whole 
purpose of this is to try to track any like anti-North Korean propaganda that might be spread within the country, uh, even though it would be really difficult to actually get any of that in the first place since uh, North Korea, it has its own intranet essentially. So it's not really connected to the outside world's internet. Uh, there's only specific sites that you can actually go to and that's what you're uh, originally trying to connect to um, inside of this browser, but it just can't actually connect if you're outside of North Korea. Um, so anyway, as far as fixing the spookiness, there is this GitHub, um, this script on GitHub from take shixx Red Star Tools. So diffuse.sh, this is what we're interested in. Um, this also has manual steps of how to pretty much do it, but like I said, this is pretty much just what you wanna run. Now, it can be a little bit tricky to actually get this onto your machine because like if we try to go to GitHub, it's not going to load because I guess they don't have an HTTP version of the site. Uh, same thing if you try to curl it, so you can't download it with curl either. So my idea for how to uh, sort of get around all this is to just use a sort of paste bin. Um, I'm actually gonna try ghost bin because I haven't tried it with this yet. Uh, and this is a little bit better than paste bin. All right, so we got my link there. I'll just copy this into my notes. All right, so let's see if we can go to ghostbin.co, paste, rw8rkf2. Um, okay, it looks like that might not work. Let me see, I can always just do paste bin if ghostbin is totally broken. Okay, so let's do that then. All right, so this is what happens um, when you try to go to Pastebin. You just have to add a bunch of security exceptions, but eventually it lets you get into it. Um, so we'll just see, is it gonna let me do the raw? All right, so we'll just copy that. And let's see, go back into my terminal. And we'll just touch. Um, let's see, okay, I got VI, put that in, and change root, and do that, and then run it. You have to be root to run it, by the way. All right, and then we can see, disabled SE Linux, killed security D, uh, killed RT scan and then um, it also killed these two programs and replaced Libos uh, and then disabled this at auto start. So there we go and we can reboot the system. All right, and there you go. So that is pretty much um, the full guide for how much you can de-spook uh, Red Star, at least from what I was able to find uh, with my research. And I'll leave a link to these um, blogs, the notes on Red Star, and the GitHub for the script. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out.